Hello, and thank you for joining this Onc Live TV Peer Exchange. In today's program, we will discuss acute leukemia and explore the future in the treatment and management of the disease. I'm Dr. Leonard Sender, Director of Clinical Operations and Program Development and the Division Chief of Pediatric Oncology at the Child Family Comprehensive Cancer Center. I'm also a Clinical Professor of Medicine at the School of Medicine, University of California, Irvine. Joining me today are Dr. Dan Dewar, attending physician of the Leukemia Service at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, Dr. Jeffrey Lancet, Professor of Oncologic Science and Section Chief for Leukemia at the H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center and Research Institute in Tampa, Florida, Dr. Mark Litzko, Chair of the Myeloid Disease Group and Professor of Medicine in the College of Medicine, Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, Chair of the Leukemia Committee for the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group, and Dr. Raul Tibis, Consultant for the Division of Hematology and Medical Oncology, Director of the Acute and Chronic Leukemia Program, a scholar in clinical research for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, Mayo Clinic in the Mayo Clinic Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. Thank you to each of you for joining us today. Let's get started. The overall outcome of adults with acute lymphoblastic leukemia remains poor. Relapse rates are high and overall survival in relapsed ALL remains dismal. First, let's discuss the challenges associated with improving outcomes in this disease. Only 20 to 30 percent of adults with ALL are cured with standard chemotherapy regimens and much needed novel therapies are currently in clinical development. First, let's discuss the tools we have available today and how to optimize therapy. Mark, what are the most important prognostic factors in Philadelphia negative ALL? Traditionally, the important prognostic factors that we've addressed in uh, uh, pH negative ALL have included the age of the patient, so older patients don't tend to tolerate uh, chemotherapy as well. Uh, the white blood count at diagnosis representing the peripheral blood blasts is also an important prognostic factor. And one of the most important traditional factors has been cytogenetics. So there are certain cytogenetic profiles that are more common as patients get older that predict for a poorer outcome. An emerging prognostic factor that we'll be discussing in more detail today is the uh, measurement of minimal residual disease uh, at different time points after therapy. Uh, there's also emerging uh, genetic markers uh, that we'll be discussing as well uh, in T lymphoblastic uh, ALL. Uh, there is the uh, NOTCH1 inhibitor, uh, I'm sorry, the NOTCH mutations that represent uh, actually a favorable prognostic factor. And then there's other uh, mutations that are, represent uh, more unfavorable prognostic factors such as RAS and the Icaros uh, mutation. Thank you. 